All right, guys, so I hope you guys are doing well. Um, today we've got a bit of an interesting one. If you guys watched the EUNO diff slap video, you'll have heard that I would have said that I had a double whammy. Uh, my e bike quit as well in the same week that I actually decided to to take the UNO part, which I can't put back together. Well, today we're going to have a look at what happened and why it happened, because I have since found out why it happened. Um, those of you that are following me on staff will know about this. Uh, you'll know also how to remedy it. But I thought just to make it a little bit easier and a bit more accessible to the greater YouTube public, um, I'm going to show you guys how to remedy the problem. Now, the problem, give me a sec. All right, so the problem is for those of you that have got the Sabaton kit. Now, the Sabaton kit is the Sabaton controller with a display and the thumb pad thingy. Mine broke, I was livid, and I threw it. Okay, but it didn't break because I threw it, it was already broken. So, a little bit of background on this. I was riding on my bike and um, taking it easy and then, you know, just to get the cobwebs and everything blown off. And then after that, I said, okay, well, let's give it beams, which I did. And everything was going fine. And all of a sudden, the bike just died. Okay, it just went dead. So I opened up the part where my circuit breaker is. I saw the circuit breaker had tripped. I switched that on, tried to switch the bike on, obviously from the thumb pad and it didn't want to come on it just stayed dead so i got back home i stripped everything down and then hang on i got the dongle out and this little thing over here i don't know if you can see it let's try and get it to focus so this little here this thingy this comes with the Sabaton all right so when you want to program the Sabaton there are two things that you have to do you have to take the screen connection off plug this in and then program it the reason for that is because the screen times out so if you've got the timeout function enabled and you're busy programming, chances are you're going to screw something up because your screen is going to time out. You're going to have to redo everything. That's where this little guy comes in. A lot of people have looked at this thing and thought, meh, and thrown it away. Why? Because the Chinese do not send instructions. They don't tell you what this little pigtail thingy is for at all. They don't say anything to you. I luckily found out that this pigtail is used when programming. It switches the controller on and it keeps it on until it's unplugged. All right. So there are two wires inside this loom that are being jumpered. Okay. Now, I'm not going to tell you what it is now. We're going to get into it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to revert everything on my bike back to the way it was when it came from the factory. Bar this because I already cut it off. And I'm pissed off about it because I bought it with a screen for a reason. But it's given in. So, for those of us that have come across this problem, maybe a lot of you have even thrown your sabotons away because there's one of two problems. You found out how to bridge it, but the problem is it doesn't spin very fast. If you use the throttle, the wheel just ticks over very slowly. It's in a limp mode. 6 km an hour max. How do we get past that? I'm going to show that to you now. So, join me. Let's get into it. Alright, so a couple of the tools that you're going to need 
when you want to do this. You're going to need a multimeter with the appropriate cables. Side cutter, a pair of pliers, either flat or long nose, depending on how good your hand articulation is. You'll need a knife, you'll need solder and a soldering iron. So that means that you're going to need to be able to solder. Now this isn't rocket science to solder. Um, it's just a couple of wires that you're going to have to cut and solder together. So depending how, how good your skills are, I'd say this is sort of a medium task. Um, for someone that's as good as I am or that's been doing it as long as I am, it's easy. But this is sort of a medium task. Okay, you have to keep your head about you and you have to know what you're doing. Right. The other thing you're going to need, um, this is just to make it look good. Um, a roll or two of insulation tape. And if you have it, maybe a couple of, couple of bits of different size heat shrink. Um, and then either a lighter or a heat gun to shrink them. So that will be it for the tools that you need. Um, let's get in and have a look what's going on with the bike. All right, so as you can see, my display is plugged in. Um, if I push, nothing happens. All right, doesn't come on at all. You can hear I'm pushing it and everything, but it's not coming on. Um, if we, sorry guys, I'm just trying to figure out which is going to be the best side. Um, but you can see there's, there's no lights, there's nothing. Okay, so the lights are, LEDs are there where my finger is. Um, all right, that's, that's where the LEDs are. So if it was on, that's where it should be. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do now um, is I'm going to unplug this thing. Uh, uh, okay. I just got it. All right. So the pigtail is in. Now... Okay, so you can see the lights are on, okay? Um, also now, all right, you can see the wheel is spinning, but that's the fastest it'll go. Okay, so it's not going any faster than that. Um, anyone that was wondering what the green LED was, okay, you can see it's off now. It's my emergency brake. So when I switch that on, all right, it shows that the e-brake is on. Okay. And if I take it off so that I can ride, then the LED's off. Okay, I'm not going to go through the whole thing of what I did, but basically what I did was this is going over the switches on my brake lever so that when that is on, my, it can be pushed and nothing is going to happen. As soon as I release it and I push the thumb throttle, then it'll turn. All right, so as you can see, the pigtail is in. Nothing is coming on. We know that the controller is okay. So next thing we have to do is we have to plug in the dongle. So, dongle in, he says again, one-handedly. Is that in? All right, so obviously it's gonna tell us not connected. We're gonna select the dongle, it'll say connecting. All right, so now it tells me to restart. Why it's not showing anything here is because that cable is still plugged in. All right, so when using the dongle, remember that this cable always has to be separated, always. So now we take it apart and we restart the app.
Right, so now you can see it says e-brake, okay? If we go up, you'll also see that we have stats over here, all right? Now, when this happens, there's only one thing that you can do. Because you can see it says that it's fault-free here at the bottom, okay? Fault-free, no issues whatsoever. So, that's telling us that there is no fault on the controller itself. But now what do we do? This thing is dead. It's the brains of the operation. Alright, so this was attached to the screen. I've cut off, I don't know what, about 20 centimeters, 200 moles worth of cable. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to strip this part of the wire off. Alright, so inside this cable you've got a number of colored cables. These are your two power cables. So there's plus whatever your battery voltage is, in my case 60 volts and minus 60 volts. Do not short these two together. Don't do it. If you don't have fuses, you're going to burn your wiring up. So don't short these two cables. Take the negative cable out of the way. Now, where the hell did I put it? The pigtail that you get that comes with the Savaton. This guy shorts out your blue and red cables. Okay? So, you can take these two cables and by means of a switch, you can short them uh, either on or off via the switch. If they're apart, the controller is going to be off. If they are put together, the controller is going to be on. The yellow and the green cable, these are your data cables. Okay, so it's data in and out from the screen. These two I'll get back to shortly. But the basic thing of what you want to do is you just want to use these two cables. Just the red and the blue. Okay, we're going to put a switch across it and we are going to use that switch to switch on our controller. So I'm going to quickly do that and then I'll come back in a bit and I'll show you what I've got. So this is effectively done. Now we don't want to use these three wires. The black, the yellow and the green we are not going to use. So I would suggest just when I can find my side cutters <laughs> lying right in front of me, I would suggest just terminating these wires so that they cannot short out, touch anything, whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. All right. Now I'm going to close everything up. Get in there. Alright, so now it's closed up. Okay, this thing is effectively ready to go. I can 
use it as is. So all I'm going to do is just bunch up these cables like this. They're all good to go. And I stick everything back inside and I'm done and dusted. So that I can do later. Now let's get into how we fix this bicycle. Oh bugger off. All right, so as you can see, my dongle is still plugged in and my cables are, um, these two are unplugged. Okay, so this is the, the programming cable thing. All right, so that's unplugged. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to start up the MQCon app. Obviously, it's not connected. Oh, things aren't on yet, are they? So let's try that again. There we go. Okay, now you can see it says e-brake, so if I switch it off, it goes to regeneration because that's what I'm on. If I switch the e-brake on again, it's going to say e-brake. But now you can see that we have info again. Okay, so now I'm just going to switch this off. Okay. Now, let's see. I'm going to pick it up. Now, what the hell is wrong there? I thought you said that putting in a switch is going to make this thing run full tilt. Well, yes, I did. But there are a couple of things that we have to change. So if you go into settings over here and you go to function, all right, over here where it says, what does it say? Boost three speed, all right? So switch three gear. That's what it's selected on now. Now, there's one change you have to make here. You either have to put it onto hard start or onto boost, and then you have to save the operation, okay? When it's done, as you can see, it'll say, it'll say operation done. Now, if we go out of settings, and you can watch this motor RPM, okay? You can also watch the, the hall value, and you can watch the throttle voltage. Those are the three things that will actually work now. So now, when I put my hand on the throttle and I start opening it up, there you can see it already run faster than it normally would. But I can open it up. All right, so as you can see, everything works, okay? The only thing that we don't have now is we aren't able to select assist gears anymore. So while it's on boost or hard start, it's going to go from zero to full throttle on your throttle swing, all right? You just cannot... And if you want to go back to a slow, like for me, when you need to start climbing stairs and so on, I go back to this, this switch three gear and I save the operation. And because I have done that, we are back to our normal slow spin again. When I drive normally, I put it on boost, tell it to save the operation, and it saves the operation and we're done. Once I, done, once I do that, then we go back to having full throttle again. Now, while we're doing that, this has to stay connected and inside your enclosure. So, tape the dongle up, all right, because it isn't weatherproof. If your box isn't weatherproof either, I suggest you to do what I'm doing now, and that is to tape it up. All right, the other two cables that you're going to have to tape up are these two. All right, so don't connect them again. Don't put these two cables back together. They have to stay disconnected. If you connect them, you're not going to be able to use your dongle, all right? Um, 
So what I'm going to do is tape them up. Right, so now what I've done is I've just taped my dongle and these two plugs up all together. So now that's going to be able to lie in on the side of my controller like this when I put the lid on. And that's it. Alright, so as you can see, we still have all of our values. Everything is working here. Now, one of two things. You can either use a dead phone or a phone that you don't use anymore I've got this old phone that I have actually gone and rooted okay so there is there is no other application used on this phone bar my MQCon app and a GPS app so this is what I use on my bike at all times. Um, so, okay, GPS isn't enabled, that's no biggie. But this is what I use on my bike at all times. So I switch between the GPS app and the MQCon app at all times on my bike. All right, so I hope that was definitive enough. Um, I hope that I could at least show you how to get around... Um, having a dead Saverton screen and then how to further use your e-bike after having that problem. Now, like I say, this isn't foolproof. Uh, if you have something like VBMS or NPMS, uh, you can use the app to actually show you what's going on in your battery pack. I do not have this, okay? The only thing I've got is I've got the MQCon app and I've got a GPS app. So if I'm doing long distance rides, I have to stop every now and again, take my gloves off. I have to switch screens so that I can see what the battery voltage is. Just make sure that things are okay. So this is by no means a foolproof solution. Like I say, if you've got the NPMS or the VBMS with the app, you're golden. Um, but there is no reason for you to have to junk your controller just because the screen has died. Now... The other thing I need to say is that do make sure that when you get back and something like this has happened, check your battery voltage first. Make sure that your BMS hasn't cut out due to too low a battery voltage. This can happen. It is possible. Um, first of all. Second of all, the other thing is take a meter and measure your battery. Make sure that the voltage is actually correct. Don't just say, well, my battery voltage is correct and that's it. Measure it and make sure. There could also be a problem with a BMS and it's not letting power through. The second or the third thing that I can say is that once you've done this, those two white plugs that I showed you that are usually plugged together for the programming, do not plug them together again. Otherwise, as you saw in the beginning, You'll open up the MQCon app and there will be no readings. Those plugs have to be separated. Point number four. When you've taped those plugs up together, also remember to close up your dongle. Vibration can shake it loose. Um, water can get in and you've got a junk. Alright, the fourth thing to remember about this is that any readings that you do from now on your bike will have to be done through your MQCon app. So remember to allow access to your Bluetooth for the app to work. Otherwise, you won't be able to connect. It's as easy as that. I've been riding around like this now for a week and I've had no further problems. The reason that this happens is because... When you're riding and let's say, as in my case, your breaker trips, there is absolutely no place for the voltage that at that speed that is being generated by the hub, there's no place for it to go. 
the only thing that is attached will be the screen and usually what happens then is it sounds like a problem that I've read up on is that the screen cannot quite take the full 72 volts so be warned of this when you're looking into maybe buying a Sabaton kit keep this in mind I've had my Sabaton running for roughly one and a half years maybe two years now without any problems and this is the first time it's happened but it has happened um, there's 95 volts in region that's being produced by that hub if there is no battery connected to the system the controller is fine it can take up to that voltage but the screen it sounds like is just not designed for that voltage and it does give in it breaks you can trash it after that okay this is the option that I chose this is what I could do I've got a switch on my um, on my throttle that I used I switch the controller on and off with that just make sure to switch your controller off otherwise it's going to drain your battery you're going to get onto your bike and you're not going to be able to go anywhere because your controller was left on so please make sure to switch off your controller because there's no visual indicator number five to remember there is 60 volts on that cable so as I showed you do not short out the red and the black cable you're gonna have problems how much I don't know but you're gonna have problems probably gonna fuse your cables and then burn all the, all the rest out because it's gonna be a dead short on the system so with that this is gonna be my final video for 2019 I wish you and yours all a Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2020 that's still coming guys thanks for watching if this video helped you and it was informational please give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and share the video cheers